So I recently just reached out to a bunch of you on our social media, our Facebook and YouTube, and said, hey, I'm in the market for buying a weather station. I really want one. I'm really into weather, especially since we got hit by a tornado a few years ago. We live in a hurricane state, Florida. I'm always watching the weather. And it's very true what they say. The older you get, well, the more that you're into the weather. I'm really starting to like weather a lot. All right, so without a doubt, the most feedback that I got from everybody was to go with an ambient weather station. That's the company right here. And y'all gave a lot of different models. Probably the second most popular requested model to go with was a Davis Instruments, but they were way out of my price range. So I was back and forth, literally cross-eyed. What weather station to go with? There's so many different options out there and ambient weather alone has a ton of different models. So I went on their website, I went back and forth on Amazon, I read reviews, and ultimately I decided to buy the WS2902. Now a lot of people recommended the WS2000 or the 2902 model. The WS2000 is quite a bit more money, about 120, 110, 120 more dollars. And there's only a few takeaways or differences between the two models. So we'll talk about that real quick while I'm unpacking this, checking everything out. We're gonna install this in this episode. We're gonna test it. I got a lot of rain coming in tonight, bad weather. So I wanna test the instruments. I wanna go ahead and get it going. I'll run it a few more days and then I'll give you feedback in this video. So what's the two big differences between the WS2902 and the WS2000? All I could find was one, well, the display right here. That's probably the biggest difference. So the WS2902 comes with kind of an older technology LCD screen that has somewhat limited viewing angles. You kind of really need to be direct on, not too much from the side up or down. Whereas the WS2000 comes with a nice TFT color screen that uh, really look sharper and you can see kind of from every angle that you want. The WS2000 screen also has more detailed information on it than this particular one does, but looking at the pictures that I've seen, I think this is gonna give me all the information that I need as far as looking from a screen itself. The other big difference, the WS2000, they pretty much use the same instruments right here the same weather station itself with all the instruments that go on, but the WS2000 does allow you to add a lightning detector uh, that you can actually mount out in the field. All the other sensors look compatible between both units. Now, I wasn't as concerned about the lightning detector. I know a lot of people said you should get it, but I have a really good app on my phone that I use a lot for my weather, and I have a lightning tracker on it, and I've set it up to where literally when I'm listening to music or have notifications come right through the phone, well, notifies me, hey, lightning strike within so many miles, and this phone is always on me. So having the lightning detector on the actual weather station wasn't as critical for me. Now, I do want to say the reason I went with this model and I'm not as concerned about the screen is because, well, this is a Wi-Fi model. So I can literally use my phone, a tablet, download their app. This is all uh, internet based. So I can pull up all the information from the weather station on the internet. You can share it, you can keep it private. You can look at other weather stations in your area that people have. I like that. So it wasn't as critical for me to have every single thing that I needed on the screen. This is probably gonna stay on my desk so I can look at it while I'm editing content and working from home. But as I'm out and about through the house or anywhere else, I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. And plus I got looking at the price difference between the WS2902 to the 2000 was like 120 bucks. I can buy a really nice tablet for 70 or $80 and actually have a tablet as a second, well, display somewhere else in the house with an amazing screen on it. And then I can just use the app and pull up the information. So it kind of made more sense to save that $110 and go with the 2902. All right, so I'm gonna pull all the instruments out. If you're not familiar, these are going to monitor lots of different things from pressures to temperatures to wind speeds. It even has a rain collection cup, probably the most desired item for me. I love tracking rainfall here, and I'm really curious about wind speed as well. It's got a wind vane tail that we're gonna put on here in a second to tell you the direction of the wind. It comes with some mounts, so you can clamp this to a pole. We're about to show you how to do that. It comes with your rain collection cup. They do sell a spike kit that has spikes that goes up all the way around this. I'm probably gonna purchase that. That keeps birds from landing on this and actually, well, pooping in this, plugging it up, or giving you any issues. All right, so let me go through the manual, snap these few pieces together. It looks very straightforward. The manual, I'll say, 
I then briefly looked through it, very nice manual. Happy to see that so I can really set this thing up correctly. So if you're at all interested in this model, bought and paid for my own money, but I'll put a link down to Amazon in the description. If you like the review and you purchase through that link, I'll get a very small commission and it doesn't cost you a dime extra. That's one way that I earn income to make videos like this. All right, so let's go ahead and start attaching everything here. It looks like all you need is a little Phillips screwdriver, which they do include one in this package. And it says a 10 millimeter wrench. That's most likely for these nuts right here for the U-bolt clamps that's gonna go on the pole that we're gonna mount outside. All right, so with the cup facing away from me on the left-hand side, looks like this is the side for your wind speed. And there is a little screw that is easy to locate right here. Once you put this on, we'll screw this in so it can't go flying off. Okay, that's on. On this side will be our wind direction. All right, now a rain cup funnel. And if you've never seen the inside of one of these, I've been curious about that myself. You can see the rain actually goes down into a little flapper, which I'm assuming kind of weighs and calculates it. And it looks like it dumps out. Now, periodically, you are gonna have to clean this out. You're gonna get trash, debris, bugs, things like that in there, and it won't be accurate. So keep that in mind. All right, so slide the cup down in and lock it. There is a little filter that comes with this for the rain funnel. So like it just snaps right down in there and has a hook so it can't blow out. That's a good touch. So just push that little piece down in and there's a hook that hooks into the bottom side of the cup. That should keep some bugs out. Also leaves and things like that, that should keep out as well from plugging it up. All right, on the bottom side, we'll put batteries in. I don't believe the unit comes with batteries and I highly recommend for a unit like this, use a lithium batteries. It's just gonna last so much longer, gonna handle the cold and all better as well. I get a pretty good deal for a large pack of lithium batteries on Amazon too, that comes in multiple four packs. I'll put that down in the description if you're curious as well. This does take double A's. All right, I see a red light that just come on the bottom. So far, so good. All right, make sure you take this sticker off of the top. There's your little solar panel right there. There's a little reset button on the bottom. It says I have to press once I do that. All right, I just seen the light go off and back on. And also, if you'll notice, I was curious how I calibrated this. There is a line right here saying due north. So this will be the direction that you point north. I was wondering how it would know wind direction here. So there's no calibration needed. You just have to set that up. And if you don't have a compass, you can actually pull one up on your smartphone. Most of them have one built in or you can download an app real quick to do that. All right, and lastly, this bracket slides right in. If you'll notice, this is set up and designed for the pole to go right into the bottom right there. Hopefully you can see that. Now slide that bracket into a little groove right here. And once you put it in, essentially what's gonna happen when you stick the pole in here and run a U-bolt through right there, you're gonna clamp the unit, which is notched out and grooved, I know this is so hard to see, to the pole, and that U-bolt's gonna keep this from flying up and off. All right, so for how I'm gonna mount this is, I went to my local hardware store and bought a 10-foot stick of what's called EMT conduit. You can find this at all big box retailers. This is a piece of inch and a half conduit right here. It's nice and rigid, should hold up in the weather. Obviously, you don't wanna use something like PVC that's just gonna flex and throw off all your readings. I'm just gonna drill a couple of holes through this, uh, 18 or so inches apart, and then I'm going to lag bolt this to a four x four post that I have in the ground out here. Now this is all temporary. Eventually we're gonna be building a pasture fence over here and I'm gonna put a really long post in in the fence along with a metal pipe and get this up in the open to where I think it's gonna get more accurate readings, but we don't have the fence in right now. All right, and on this end, again, the pole is gonna go up into here and we're gonna slide a couple U-bolt clamps around. All right, so here is a post that I have buried in the ground and I'm going to set this up here. This is also where I have two different style rain gauges, including a Stratus rain gauge, which a lot of people consider to be highly accurate 
for, well, the kind of basic design of it. So it's gonna be interesting to kind of collect results off of the weather station and compare them to, well, a couple of different rain gauges here. Now, me mounting this up above it, it could affect rainfall that actually makes it to the gauges. I do understand that, but again, all of this is quite temporary. All right, so I'm gonna take a level and level this pole up best I can. I can put shims behind it and work it left or right or back and forth this direction. And then obviously I can twist the pole this direction because I only have one lag bolt in it right now. It's worth mentioning there's a bubble level on top side of this station to where you can get it perfectly balanced, but obviously, well, it has to be a little bit lower to do that or you'll need a very tall ladder to get up there. All right, as you can see, I have it mounted up in the air about 13 to 14 feet. Read the manual, they give a bunch of different recommendations on heights based on if you're trying to collect the best rain data, the best wind data. And then they give some average heights to mount this for a good collection of all the data. Now I do have some buildings around here and trees, so I'm not expecting the most accurate wind data there is, but I am open to the sky right here, so I should get rainfall data. All right, so I've just plugged this in on my little tabletop in here, and I have the door open because I'm in a metal shop. Keep in mind, wireless transmission does not work very well through metal walls, typically not at all. But it made quick communication with the outside unit where we're already getting some data. So I'm gonna show you the screen, uh, which is probably one of the bigger complaints with this unit, and what kind of data we're pulling off of this right now. Then we're gonna continue just to collect it over the next few days and discuss that later in the video. Okay, so right off the bat, I'd say the screen resolution leaves a lot to be desired, which I kinda of already knew that coming in. Yes, you have to be very specific on the angle. Um, relatively straight on. If you start going up high, it actually looks really good. But then if you go off to the sides, well, you can see it starts kind of vanishing on you. Down below is by far the worst. So you always want to have this where you're kind of looking at it or down on it. So you can see it quickly connected to the outside units. Tell me I got a two and a half mile an hour wind coming out of the northeast. Here's my outdoor temperature and humidity. I still need to set up my time and date. You can see your pressure. There's a light meter as well. This one also tells you your UV index. I kind of like that. So here's my indoor temperature and humidity. You can also add an external meter to this that you can mount elsewhere indoors and it'll communicate back and read to this. But right now it's reading directly off of the unit. And then here is your rainfall total. All right, so if you look at the buttons down on the bottom, these are kind of just uh, light touch buttons. So you can check different things like say from the temperature, one thing I like, that tells me the chill now. I can hit it again and get the dew points. That's always important. Uh, probably your heat index right there is what that's telling me. Or you can turn it off for your actual temperature. As far as your rain goes, there is your weekly total that just popped up down there. Monthly total. And the overall total that this has collected. Or you can go back to the rate, how much you're getting per hour. So one thing worth mentioning with the display on the WS2000, Rain, for example, it gives you all that information on the screen. You don't have to hit any buttons and go through. But again, I don't think that's going to be a concern to me because I'm probably going to use the app more than anything. It's not that big of a deal to go down there and hit the buttons. So here's your wind. You can cycle through the gust, the direction, if you want the degrees. And you can just leave it as is for the little arrow tells you the direction we're coming out of the due north now at 2.9 miles an hour. So you have average pressure settings for over 24 hours. It looks like it goes through 48 hours, 72 hours, and then what you're currently reading. You can set different alarms. I do like that. And you can hit your min max button right there and it looks like every single screen that's reading will give you the min and max. And there it says min up top. So I do like that. Also, if you want to use this on a nightstand, it does give you different brightnesses. You can turn it down towards almost completely off. Bright, medium, and very, very low. The camera's not even going to pick it up, but I can see just a tiny little bit going on in the background. I forgot to mention this also gives you the moon phase. That's something that uh, I like to know as well. All right, so let me download the app, mess with that for a little bit, and let's discuss it. I think that's one of the big selling points for ambient weather is their network and their apps lots of information on there all right so here it is next day we're up in my office and i want to show you here on my screen i know it's probably a little hard to see but we actually had a little bit of rainfall over the last few days not much as you can see we did some wind collection and i've learned the screen a little more 
So I will say on my desk, the view is fine. Kind of slightly looking down at it with the angle that it has is perfect. The one thing I don't like is the buttons down here are not illuminated. So if you want to touch on them to go say, look at rain totals, for example, you better have some light in order to see them. I really wish those buttons were backlit. But again, I've done showed you how to scroll through this. Everything has been connected great, no issues. So let's scroll over to the ambient weather network. This is where I think I'm really gonna go for my data. The little screen that I just showed you is nice to sit on your desk um, for some basic information. But I kind of already knew this is where I would wanna be on the ambient weather network. That's why I say it wasn't as important to me to get the next model up that cost quite a bit more because I knew I was gonna be using my laptop or a tablet or a phone to get on this network right here. Plus the app is very similar on the phone to what I'm showing you here on the computer. But for example, you can also check out all your neighbor's data. This is a town not too far away from us and you can see there's a lot of people on this network here. The further you scroll in, the more stations you'll find. But for example, I can click on one of these stations and as long as someone has made it public, I can scroll down and see all their information, whatever they basically make available to you. And I'm noticing a lot of people do make this information available. So this is all today's information. You can see right up here, it was updated two minutes ago. It seems to refresh about every two minutes. Here's our current temperature in the area, 52 degrees. You can see the dew point, what it feels like, the wind that we've been having. There's the gust down here the peak mile per hour. So a lot of information here. You can also look at the rainfall total. Uh, the last event gave this person almost a quarter of an inch. The pressure over here, humidity, UV index, solar radiation, which is basically kind of, well, your light indication that it's reading out there. This person has a lightning meter, something, again, that I don't have this model. Looks like their last lightning strike was two days ago, which, again, I have lightning strike indicator on my phone, which is where I prefer it because my phone's always on me, and I want to know when that's on the way. And the other thing, if you scroll down here and take a look, I really like this moon and sun indicator right here. So it takes a minute to figure out, but you can see the moon's right there and the sun dots right there. That's because we're a little past noon for the day. There it is, 12 p.m. And you can see the moon, well, it's not visible. It's showing it doesn't come back up till midnight right here, which is correct. It's 90% waning, so it's on the decrease. We just had a full moon. And you can see that it goes until about 8 or 9 a.m. right there. Then you can see your sunrise, sunset, plus it also gives you the times down here. This is something I like to pay attention to. And over here on the right is what's called a quick view. Theirs is relatively small. I'm going to show you mine right here, but this gives you a bunch of condensed information. All right, so here is my weather station right here. This is kind of my main dashboard, and I really like this setup, and you can modify this as well. So my quick view here, I don't know how visible this is to all of you, but look, it's got every bit of information you can want from temperature, dew point, yesterday's highs and lows, weekly highs and lows, monthly. Here's all your wind data, and you can see we've currently been averaging around six and a half miles an hour. We had an gust up to 17.2 miles an hour. A little breezy out there. 0 0.04 inches rain total. We're gonna go outside and measure that in just a second, compare it to my manual gauge. There's all your pressure data, humidity, and all your temperature for your indoor. Some solar information as well. So this is a heavily condensed quick view right here. I like that. This is what I'm mostly gonna pull up constantly on my phone and check. Now if you come over here to the right, here is your more detailed outdoor temperature information with yesterday, the week, the month, the totals, highs, lows. Here's your wind speed data. Again, 17.2 mile an hour gust. There's a the direction we're coming from right now, six and a half miles an hour. Here's your day, event, week, and month totals right here for rain. You can also do a yearly total. Here's an eight day forecast. Takes a little bit for your eyes to kind of focus and get used to this one, but here's your rain chances at the bottom. Looks like Friday is a pretty high chance of rain for us. Our temperatures start warming back up. You can see cloudy, stormy, partly cloudy, sunny. So I like the eight day forecast right there as well. UV index, solar radiation, temperature, humidity, your batteries, how they're doing, and again, that moon indicator. So this is great right here, these tiles of information. But if you really are into the data, you can go up to the top right up here and click on charts and graphs and get even more detailed information. This I really like. So for example, I like to pay attention to dew points. So right here, this bottom line is my dew point. Top line is the outdoor temperature. A lot of people don't know dew points. Whenever you're within about three degrees of the actual temperature, 
according to your dew point, well, you can start forming fog, moisture, and or rain. So I like watching this. This is a good trend if you have rain on the way and if it's coming. So yesterday you can see our dew point and our temperature were separated by many degrees here. We can scroll over and pull that information up. Dew point was 66 degrees, outdoor was 72. So six and a half degree separation. Not really gonna have rain on the way. Well, where they come down here to within a couple of degrees of each other, 1.8. If we scroll down, you can see the first little bit of rain showed up yesterday. You look over here on the right hand side, to where more rain showed up. It gives you the specific time, exactly how many inches per hour. It's very detailed, but if we scroll right back up, right here, look at the dew point and temperature within one degree of each other. So it's a good indicator of moisture. That's why I like it. And you can see that we're starting to separate out again because the rain has passed out of the area. This is detailed information on your wind gust. You can see the wind speed in blue. The gray spikes are your gust. Our biggest peak was 4.35 a.m. this morning. Steady 12 mile an hour winds and a peak to 17. Here's your wind direction, north, west, south, and east. This is in degrees where it's plotted. Again, your rainfall. You can see the trend line on your pressure, humidity, solar radiation, UV index, your temperatures, indoor, indoor humidities, and sun and moon heights. Now, if you want to take it a step further, I love the line charts and graphs, but if you look up here, there is another section under charts and graphs, click on the dashed lines, and now you have actual summarized data for you, and it gets very detailed. For example, right here, look, this gives me a full breakdown of all the information. We have times, we have the low temperatures, high temperatures, it marks the times for you, the feel like, dew point, wind speeds, all this stuff is logged as well. And if you scroll down, you can get even more detailed on this information. Plus, there's a little plus icon that you can expand this out even more. Now look at this, it's literally logging, looks like every five minutes worth of data. So if you need to go back and see an event that happened, a high wind gust that blew something down or your peak uh, wind speeds, rain, really hot temperatures, all of this data, has been logged for you every five minutes, and there's a bunch of it. And I do believe I've seen somewhere earlier that you can download all of this data as well if you want to go put it somewhere and plot it yourself. This is probably the far more in-depth than most people are going to want for a home weather station, but I really like this if I need to go back and look at a specific event. So as you can see, it gets quite detailed. Let's go outside and compare the rainfall total here. Again, let's look. Total for the month, I only had this up a little over a day was 0 0.04, so it really missed us yesterday. Let's go compare that to what we collected outside. All right, so as you can see, quite breezy today. Storm just passed through. So this weather station is going to get itself a workout as far as wind collection. So let's take a look at this Stratus Professional Rain Gauge here. A lot of people really trust these. I am showing, it looks like, 0 0.06, so six one hundredths, not even a tenth of an inch there. We sure didn't get much rain, did we? So that's a that's good. 0 0.06 here. This says we got 0 0.04. With that said, this isn't a highly sophisticated piece of equipment. Neither of them are. I'm expecting some discrepancies there, but more than close enough that it's going to be nice to take a peek up here at this and trust the information that's coming through. We're just going to get a whole lot more rain. It's going to be several more days before our next rain chance, and I'll monitor this throughout the next, well, few weeks getting rain collecting wind speed, although I have no way to compare that, um, and just the overall experience of it. So that's kind of the two big differences. I'll give you an update on this um, if I have any issues, but as many people has recommended the ambient weather stations, I'm expecting no issues. The stuff should just work, and the reviews were excellent online. So if you're curious about this model or the WS2000 that I was talking about, I'll put a link down in the description if you want to go check those out on Amazon. Thanks for watching. Ask any questions you have.